It's Monday, December 10th, 2012, and let's talk about what happened this week at xdadevelopers.com. First up, as usual, device ROM update news. If you remember, a little while back, Google unveiled Android 4.2 and released it to the AOSP. However, several devices were left lacking and left out entirely of the AOSP builds for Android 4.2. One of those left out was the Motorola Zoom, the first real tablet that was officially included in the AOSP. Well, thanks to the guys on Team EOS, there is now an Android version 4.2 AOSP build for the Motorola Zoom. These are nightly builds at the moment, and there are still some kinks that they're working out of it, but it is definitely a step in the right direction for those of you who have the Motorola Zoom and who were kind of worried that you weren't going to see any sort of 4.2 on your device. Also keep in mind this is only for the Wi-Fi only version of the Zoom, the Wing Ray I think they call it. Either way it's a bit of a shame that it's not going to be included in official AOSP but like I said it is still very nice to have it. In other ROM update news there are a few Cyanogemon related stories so we'll go ahead and throw those all in there at once. Someone mentioned in the comments section of the Friday video that the Sony Xperia X10 had received a port of Cyanage Mod 10. Well, over the weekend, that story also made the front page, so I thought I would go ahead and mention it. XDA senior member Scritch007 has put together this unofficial port of CM10, and given the age of the device, the fact that it's a 1 GHz 384 megs of RAM device, still very nice to see a jelly bean running on it. There are definitely a few things that aren't working quite right, like the hotspot, the camcorder, and there are some glitches just in the display when you're using the camera. So it's still to be considered in an early alpha or beta state, sort of depends on what part of the article you're reading. But the list of working things on this ROM is definitely very long, and actually there are some things that are working on this that you don't see on other Cyanogen Mod 10 ROMs, so definitely a, a good start. There's also an unofficial port of CM10 now available for the Droid Razor M. This was done by XDA senior member dhacker29, who also did one for the Droid Razor HD. Although the Droid Razor HD was only available for the Developer Edition, and this one for the Razor M works for the Developer and the Consumer Editions. Now in terms of the things that are broken in this ROM, because there are going to be some things broken in pretty much any Cyanogemon 10 Alpha or Beta ROM that comes out, broken things are the Wi-Fi Direct Connect and NFC. Wi-Fi Direct, probably not something that a lot of people are using. That's the Intel wireless direct connection thing that, like I said, most people just aren't using. And NFC, yeah, that's definitely a, a more than a little bit of a bummer, but I'm sure it, these things are things that will hopefully get worked out in the near future. And those are really the only bugs that he knows about. There are probably other ones to be found. It's all a matter of the community using it and finding the bugs in it and letting him know. Now, both of those that I just talked about were CM10 ports. There are also some CM10.1 ports in the works. XTA senior member Flinny released a port for the HTC Desire Desire Z and Desire G2 on behalf of Team Andromedus. Again, this one is to be considered an alpha. There are some things that aren't working like the trackpad for unlocking, and I'm not really sure about that one. I've not used the, the Desire Z or the G2, so I'm not familiar with its trackpad. Uh, but it says it can't be used for unlocking, so I'm guessing that that's a bit of a, a decent sized issue. If you do have one of these devices and you're interested in trying it out, of course do make sure to read the forum thread and get all of the details. And the last CM port I thought I would talk about, XDA recognized developer Zach Console has released a port of CM10 for the Sony Xperia Arc and Xperia Arc S. As I've mentioned with all the other ones, this is considered an alpha, and the things that aren't working are pretty common to other ones like Bluetooth and camera, so it may not be daily driver worthy for you quite yet. Again, as I I will say every single time make sure to read the forum thread to see if there's anything that will pertain to you and see if there's any way that you can help if you're interested in helping. Now as I've mentioned a few times before, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, which I've actually got a test device here, has a very neat feature in multi-window multi mode, multiple things on the screen at the same time, where you can just kind of pull out like that, if it'll work, there we go, and have multiple things running on your device at the same time. Very cool, although not available on other devices, generally speaking. That is until now. XDA senior member Mithrandir has made a mod that will work on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Now there are two ways to apply this mod to it. The first way, the dirty way, kind of involves ripping apart a bunch of uh, jar files on your device. The second way, and probably the better option for a lot of people, is just to flash some files to your device. According to the notes here, you have to be running a Deodext ROM based on XXLSJ, which is Android 4.1.2, it does give you some nice extra options like extra buttons on your lock screen. So if you do have the Galaxy S2 and you're capable of running that ROM or if you're capable of ripping apart some jars and APKs and you want to try it the hard way, you might be interested in trying this out because after using the Galaxy Note 2 for a little while, I'm definitely a big fan of the multi-windowed feature, although 
I don't know exactly how useful it's gonna be long term. It's it's really a big novelty thing. Anyway, like I said before, like I say all the time, read the forum, read the thread, see what is applicable to you, and make sure you don't prick your device, please. Now in a bit of interesting news that's not exactly ROM or mod related. A little while back we talked about XBMC working its way over to Android slowly. XBMC is the media center where you can connect to a bunch of different internet services or local services and and browse your media, browse online media, and have everything in one device. Well as as of this weekend or late last week, XBMC Beta 3 for Android became available. It does still appear to be quite buggy. There are a long list of working add-ons and a medium-sized list of not working add-ons. You can see all of these on the portal post to get some more information about it. it. Seems like there are, like I said, still a lot of people having issues with uh, the higher resolutions being a little bit more choppy. So anyway, if you are interested in trying out XBMC on your device, and I would probably recommend it more on a tablet than on a phone or maybe one of the larger devices like the Note 2, then make sure to go on over to the website and read some more about this. And the last story I thought I would talk about today has to do with this little guy. This is the Raspberry Pi. XDA senior member Marty331 wrote up a tutorial on how to take this little guy with some extra hardware, meaning like an HDMI cable, USB cable, and a keyboard and things like that, and make this into a web server. Might not sound like something that's incredibly difficult if you're a sysadmin or if you've used the Raspberry Pi at all, but if you're new to Linux, if you're new to sysadmin work or new to web hosting or anything like that, it could be something that's kind of daunting. So definitely nice to have a tutorial for something like that out there. And again, nice use of the Raspberry Pi forum that has been added to the XDA site in the last few weeks. Anyway, I think that's going to be about all from me for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Friday. One last thing I completely forgot to mention, so I'm filming it on the Galaxy Note front-facing camera. Good test. Make sure to check out the XDA site. They have now teamed up with Cruiser Light to create t-shirts and phone cases and all sorts of fun stuff like that with the XDA branding on it. So if you have a, a Galaxy Nexus, a Galaxy S3, things like that, they're taking pre-orders for phone cases and they are making no money off of them. Honestly, I'm very tempted to pick up a Galaxy Nexus XDA case myself, just because that's pretty cool. Uh, so I might might be looking at that myself, but do make sure to check out the, the XDA site and the link to Cruiser Light. I think it's actually like store.xdadevelopers.com to check out your official XDA swag that you can pick up.